Okay, taking a look at Ohm's Law. One of the things we have to take a look at in Ohm's Law is calculating out and understanding different circuits and the characteristics of the circuit. So the first one we're going to take a look at is a series circuit. And if we draw out a series circuit with a ground, and we'll put a voltage source in here, and then we'll put in a couple of resistors. Now, one of the characteristics of a series circuit is that the sum of all individual resistance values will equal the total circuit resistance. So if I start laying out some numbers for the resistors, R1, R2, and R3, and then put some values in for them, 2 ohms for R1, 6 ohms for R2, and 4 ohms for R3. So now to calculate out the circuit resistance, or RT, resistance total, is R1 plus R2 plus R3. And if I take a look at now putting in the values for each one, R1 is 2 ohms, R2 is 6 ohms, and R3 is 4 ohms. So if we add all these up together, we end up with 12 ohms of resistance. And again, you can see that it's cumulative of all the resistance values in the circuit. So the next one that we have to take a look at, <coughs> excuse me, the next one we have to take a look at is the amount of current flowing in the circuit. So now we're going to take a look at IT, which is the intensity of current flow or the rate of electrons that flow through the circuit in, at that particular point. So IT equals E over RT. And we take the voltage in the circuit, which is 12.5 volts, divided by the resistance total, which we've already established right here, of 12 ohms we end up with a value of 1.04 amps. So the next thing we have to do in this particular circuit is find out what the voltage drops are. Because whenever we consume voltage or electrical pressure from this point, we're using the electrical pressure to push the current through each of the resistance values until we consume the value of current that we've established in the circuit. So whatever leaves here is going to end up here at the circuit. So if I start out over here with an amp meter that equals 1.04 amps, if I was to put an amp meter here, then I would end up with 1.04 amps. And if I was to pick it up anywhere in the circuit, I would have 1.04 amps. Because in a series circuit, the current flow is the same throughout the entire circuit. So next thing we have to take a look at is the voltage drops in the circuit. So I'm just going to place how you would actually put the meter leads into a series circuit to determine do we have the appropriate voltage drop, and does it add up until we end up with the source voltage? Okay, so if I was to make my connection with a meter, this would be VD1. This would be VD2. And this would be VD3. So now carrying on with the voltage drop. So if we take a look at the voltage drop, VD1 equals I times R1. And if we follow through, we've already established that we have 1.04 amps times the resistance of R1, which is 2 ohms, which equals 2.08 volts. 2.08 volts. And if we take a look at VD2, it's I times R2, which equals, and again, we have the same amount of current flowing in a series circuit, 1.04 amps times the resistance of R2, which is 6 ohms, 
which equals 6.24 volts. Then we take a look at VD3, which equals I times R3, which equals 1.04 amps times the resistance of R3, which is 4 ohms, which equals 4.16 volts. 4.16 volts. So now, Kirchhoff's law states that the sum of all individual voltage drops will equal source voltage. So if we take a look at this and we add up 2.08 volts for VD1, 6.24 volts for VD2, and 4.16 volts for VD3, the total of this calculates out to 12.48 volts. And in this particular case, understanding that there is some rounding involved up or down, and whenever we do calculations, there is going to be a small variation depending on the decimal place and whether a particular individual has rounded up or down. So in this particular case, if we were to round up, we would make this 12.5, giving us exactly what our source voltage is right here. So that's how we go about calculating out a series circuit and establishing what the current flow is, the total resistance in the circuit, as well as all the voltage drops that pertain to it. Now if we take a look at the understanding of doing a diagram like this and how it pertains to the industry, this resistance value here could be a connector from the battery terminal. So we might have two ohms of resistance right here. And then in this particular case, maybe we have another connector here that's actually outside of the chassis, subjected to salt and corrosion and any other uh, contaminants, accumulating six ohms. And if that's the particular case, if we look at the voltage drop here, we are losing half of the source voltage through this resistor. This could actually be the connector to the cable. This could be the resistance of the cable. This might be the resistance of the next connector on the cable in that circuit. So that's how we can look at a calculation on the board and how we can relate it directly to what would happen in the chassis if we were to have this same situation happen. And of course, if we lost half of the source voltage partway through the circuit, then it's going to affect the function of the circuit uh, overall when we calculate it.